Picture this. In a dimly lit laboratory, a scientist gently places a single drop of liquid onto a surface. But this isn't just any liquid. It's a symphony of living cells, orchestrated by technology. As the drop spreads, it begins to pulse with life, forming structures that shouldn't exist in nature. This is the dawn of a new era where humans aren't just observing life. We're composing it. Welcome to the world of biotechnology in 2050, where the line between biology and technology doesn't just blur, it vanishes completely. We're about to embark on a journey that will challenge everything you thought you knew about what it means to be human and what it means to be alive. Imagine walking into a hospital where organs aren't donated, they're printed, where soldiers don't just recover from injuries, they emerge stronger. Where buildings don't just shelter us, they breathe with us. This isn't science fiction anymore. This is our future. And it's arriving faster than anyone predicted. Deep beneath our cities, in laboratories both sanctioned and secret, scientists and biohackers are rewriting the code of life itself. They're creating eyes that see beyond the visible spectrum, skin that heals at impossible speeds, and hybrid creatures that blur the line between machine and organism. But with this power comes questions that humanity has never had to answer before. Let's start with bioprinting. Imagine a world where we don't wait for organ donors. Instead, we grow them. Massive organ farms house thousands of bioprinted hearts, lungs, and kidneys, each one a perfect match for its recipient. But that's just the beginning. Scientists are pushing the boundaries even further, creating enhanced organs with capabilities that nature never intended. Lungs that filter toxins before they enter your bloodstream. Eyes that can zoom in on objects a mile away. Hearts that never skip a beat. But perhaps the most revolutionary developments are happening in the world of biohybrid robotics. Picture this. Robots with living tissue for muscles. Machines that can heal themselves. Artificial creatures so lifelike they can infiltrate and study natural ecosystems without detection. These aren't just robots anymore. They're a new form of life altogether. And then there's the underground world of biohackers, modern-day alchemists working in basement labs, pushing the boundaries of human enhancement. They're creating people who can regrow limbs like salamanders, who can see in the dark like cats who can process information faster than any computer. These neo-humans, as they're called, might represent the next step in human evolution, or our first step away from humanity altogether. But the implications go far beyond individual enhancement. Imagine cities where the buildings themselves are alive. Structures made of bioengineered materials that can self-repair, clean the air, and even reproduce. Streets lit by bioluminescent plants instead of electric lights. Seawalls made of living coral that grow stronger with each passing wave. The potential for this technology to solve our greatest challenges is unprecedented. Climate change? We're engineering super plants that can absorb carbon dioxide at unprecedented rates. Food scarcity? We're creating self-replenishing food containers that never run empty. Disease? We're developing humans who can heal others through touch alone. The medical implications alone are staggering. Consider the emergence of personalized organoids, miniature versions of your own organs grown in labs. These tiny replicas serve as perfect test subjects for treatments, allowing doctors to try different approaches without risking your health. Imagine being able to test cancer treatments on a miniature version of your tumor, ensuring the most effective treatment before ever starting therapy. In the realm of reproduction, artificial wombs are revolutionizing how we think about human development. These advanced incubators don't just support life, they enhance it. Scientists can now optimize conditions for fetal development in ways nature never could, potentially reducing birth defects and developmental issues. But this raises profound questions about the future of human reproduction and the role of natural pregnancy in our society. 
The intersection of biotechnology and environmental conservation is perhaps even more remarkable. Marine biologists are using bioprinted coral reefs to restore damaged ecosystems, creating structures that not only mimic natural reefs, but actively promote marine life growth. These synthetic reefs can adapt to changing ocean conditions, potentially offering a solution to coral bleaching and ocean acidification. In agriculture, we're seeing the emergence of what some call living factories, bioengineered plants that produce not just food, but pharmaceuticals, materials, and even electronic components. Imagine fields of wheat that not only provide grain, but also produce medical compounds, or trees that grow building materials with specific structural properties. The military applications of biotechnology present both promise and peril. Soldiers with bioprinted healing capabilities could survive previously fatal injuries. Neural interfaces could allow for unprecedented coordination between units. But these same technologies could be used to create enhanced warriors with capabilities far beyond normal human limits, raising questions about the ethics of human enhancement in warfare. Perhaps most intriguing is the emergence of biological computing. Scientists are developing computers that use living neurons as processors, creating systems that think more like brains than machines. These biocomputers could revolutionize artificial intelligence, creating systems that are more energy efficient and potentially more capable of true learning and adaptation than traditional computers. But with every breakthrough comes new questions, new dangers, and new ethical dilemmas. When we can create life from scratch, who gets to decide what forms that life should take? When we can enhance human capabilities beyond their natural limits, who gets access to these improvements? And perhaps most importantly, as we gain the power to redirect the course of evolution itself, are we prepared for the responsibility that comes with it? In the coming decades, governments will grapple with regulations for technologies they barely understand. Underground biohackers will continue to push the boundaries of human enhancement. Corporations will race to patent new forms of life. And somewhere in this mix of competition, innovation, and experimentation, the future of our species will be decided. We're standing at a crossroads in human history. The decisions we make about biotechnology in the next few decades will determine not just our future, but the future of all life on Earth. Will we use this power wisely to heal our planet and solve humanity's greatest challenges? Or will we lose control of our creations, unleashing consequences we never could have predicted? This is more than just technological progress. It's the next chapter in the story of life on Earth. And for the first time in history, we're not just reading that story, we're writing it. Welcome to the future of biotechnology, 